To learn about the off-grid lifestyle and to be inspired to live your dreams, click subscribe so you don't miss anything. Hit the bell notification. So I made a lot of progress today on my outdoor wood furnace, also known as an outdoor heat exchanger. That's what is more commonly known if you're going to look this up on Google or YouTube, but I'm being rebellious. I'm going to call it an outdoor wood furnace. <laughs> so what I've done today is I've ran my ductwork and my chimney. This piece of ventilation you saw in the preview that it's a piece of aluminum pipe, just like the one I have down here. Then I put another piece of flexible ventilation that's insulated. This was eight inches and it was uh, $32, so that wasn't too bad. And the aluminum stuff was 20 feet of it. I think that's 20 feet too. And that was $20. I'm up to $50 or so. I was going to return the flexible black insulated. See, it's insulated here because it was too big. I wanted six inch. I should have gotten six inch. Wish I had gotten six inch, but I got eight inch. Well, then Carolyn had an idea to insulate the aluminum, which is what I wanted, with the eight inch. And then I just taped this up. All these bricks hold in the heat around in the wood stove here. So the wood stove heats up. All that heat collects inside these bricks. And then I take the heat out of the bricks through the inlet that comes it comes through the inlet so that's the return from the house cycles around inside there gets good and hot comes out of the top you know right past the chimney and then comes out and back around so it just kind of circles around and around all right so i'm inside the camper now and i understand that this editing won't be the greatest in the world i'm just kind of splicing it in here but this is the, the receiving of the hot air from the wood furnace. And I got a little fan in front of the ventilation. So right behind the fan is the ventilation that runs out to the heat exchanger. And you can see that the inlet temperature is at 140 degrees. When I went out to the heat exchanger and I put the same thermometer at the inlet, it was at 180 degrees. So I've only lost a 40 degree temperature in between the wood for stove and here. Now, of course, in the winter, that may change a little bit. Even if it got into 120 degrees in here, that would be fantastic. Now, I still need to put more insulation out there, as you saw. This is working really well. There has been a lot of questions. What am I going to do about the water? How am I going to keep the water from freezing? I am going to wrap the tank here, my water tank, with uh, styrofoam insulation. And I'm going to glue the pieces together, and ground heat will come up and, and help keep it warm. But not enough. The second thing I'm going to do is on really cold days, like, you know, when it gets below, I don't know, 20 degrees, I'm going to turn on my RV pump, which is underneath this pan, and I'm going to recirculate so I'll have water coming out of the pump right back into the top. So it'll just be recirculating. And so the movement of the water will help keep it from freezing as well. 
And then the third thing I'm gonna do is I've already designed my heat exchanger to accept another receiving port right there. So I got one for the house and then I got one for the water tank. And so I'll have two outlets. I have another outlet right here. So this outlet will come out of here and over to the water tank, hooks into the water tank, and then the return will come back down on the ground, coming into the inlet. Now the, the hose that I was talking about that's gonna recirculate the water back into the tank from the pump to the top, I'm gonna make sure that the hose runs through the ventilation and inside the, the heat exchanger and come back out. My goal is, is to get the water to warm up just a little bit. You know, even 10 degrees would help. Now, another question that has come up is, how am I going to keep the well water from freezing? Uh, I've already taken care of this. I have this pipe going down into the well hole up there on the well. It, it goes all the way down to the well pump, 130 feet. 36 inches down the well, I have drilled a real small hole right through the pipe here. So down 36 inches below the freeze line, a lot lower than the freeze line. So what happens is, is when I shut the well pump off, that water drains back down through that hole and empties the, the pipe. There's no water in it to freeze. Then the rest of the hose, I just drain out after I'm done at the end. It's already froze once and I didn't have any issues. So that worked. Another question about the well is, the other day I was showing you that as the well pump was running, I was shutting off the water. I can open it and shut it right here, just like a garden hose. And a lot of people were saying, you're going to burn up the pump, you're going to burn up the pump. You can't shut the water off. And that's true. It's called deadhead. What happens is all, that pump keeps running and it heats up the water and it evaporates the water. And so now you don't have anything cooling the pump. And so, yeah, you can burn up the pump. The thing is, is down the same well hole I was talking about where I drilled a hole through it, I also have a pressure relief valve inside there. And so when I shut the valve off, that pressure relief valve opens up inside the well, allowing water to continue to flow. It just falls right back down into the well is what it does. And so I, it never really shuts off the pump. I mean, the water never shuts off. It just opens up in a different location when I shut it off here. And it also keeps me from running water all over the place by leaving this open. So it kind of gives me a, a sense of normalcy. So I'm not having to oh, run over, turn around the generator, shut off the generator, unplug the generator, plug it into. And then Mary has asked a question. Mary has commented on my channel forever. I can't remember how long she's been with us. She watches almost every video, at least I think every video. And sometimes she comments twice a day, once on Facebook and again on uh, YouTube. And she wanted to know about the power line going through our yard. First of all, I have to tell you, I am not hooked up to electric. We're not going to be hooked up to electric. The power line just runs straight up to this guy's house. Not mine. <laughs> you can see that I'm not hooked up to anything. Okay. The solar panels sit right underneath it. And I have a wire running right into the house from the solar panels. But I want to answer Mary's question. Mary's question was, actually it was several questions. Do I have to allow the electric company on my property? The answer is yes, I do. Does the electric company own the property that they are allowed to come on? No, they don't. I'm required to keep an easement so they can go through. And the easement is the width of that. That is what they cut out right there. When I got here, there was a path that they had kept clean. This was all grown up over here and grown up over here. I've knocked this down since. You'll see up there past the power pole that they kind of maintain everything to the left of that. It's getting grown up this year. I'm sure they'll be back out to clean it up. But when we got here, that was all knocked down. You can see that they've been here and they've left tread marks in, in the yard. Now, can I keep them off my property? I don't think I can. I mean, I looked it up. They have rights to the property. It's on the deed that they have rights to it. Every time we talk about power lines, somebody's going to tell me, oh no, you got to have the whole property cleared off for the electric company. I mean, I've heard all kinds of things. I got to have 20 feet on each side. 
the camper can't be there. I think one person said 50 feet on each side. Well, in that case, I just won't give up the property because if I can't build 50 feet away from the power pole, then there's no reason for me to actually be here. Now, here's the thing. So if you look over to the neighbor's yard, he's got a building right underneath the power line. They put the power line right over the building. He just has to keep a little easement on the side. The other thing is, is right here, there was a building. It had fallen down and I've since cleaned it up and burned it down and everything. But they actually put the power line right over a fence. There's a fence there, there was a building there. Yeah, I think they just wanted that little section so they can drive through. So I hope I answered everybody's questions today. Thanks for watching.